Hi, this is Hi Bob Poor Bob, and we're about to play some Ultimate General Civil War. Hello, and welcome back. We are going to play some more Ultimate General Civil War. What a surprise, right? We are not going to be taking those two cavalry units in. We are going to be taking in 14 units of infantry, max size to 2,500, with very, very low two stars just showing off weapons and we are using almost all the colonels in this map we are going to try to get colonels into brigadier generals during the next two maps if possible we bought the infields we are looking at whether or not we should buy that we we do have just enough points that we could buy that manpower just to see how much manpower we could have in the washington fight it'd be interesting to see just how many men we could bring into that battle. Yes, I could probably win it with 100,000, maybe 110,000. But, you know, where's the fun in that? So our goal today is to try to flank the enemy and get into the woods that you see down to the bottom right-hand corner. Now, you're, now you don't see it, but it's down there, right there, with that little farm in front of it. We're going to try to get into that woods and stop the enemy from retreating back into that woods. That's pretty much the entire goal. Because I know that if I can do that, I can stop them in their tracks everywhere else easily enough. And that will, that will shorten the distance of the battlefield that my men have to move forward. As well as keep them from getting in that good cover. And... In this battle, we try a couple times to get around there. And for the most part, you will see what happens as we go. Because I am going to try not to spoil too much. So we are moving forward, f fighting off against their skirmishers. They don't have any infantry on the field as of yet. So we do have a chance to maneuver here at the beginning to get into position and set up for whatever infantry units they're going to get here in a little while. For the most part, we're just setting up a standard defense line guarding against the attack from the south that will come right below the tree line there and from the right side is where right and south is where m the majority of their units including two artillery units will spawn. We do have one unit of infantry that will spawn up there next to the river and one that will spawn by this little tributary down here that you can't see right now. But we'll see in a second where they spawn. It will spawn right down there in the south of that, right there, near that little fork. I don't know exactly where it spawns. I can't see it, I don't think, whenever it actually spawns, probably. Maybe it spawns at the edge of the map and moves in. I do not know. Sometimes it acts like things spawn whenever you first see them. So it's hard to know if they actually spawn then or if you just, that was the first time you could see them. We're moving up all the extra units that we get in because Panda Crowd is nice enough to actually give us a tooltip that tells us how many units we're actually going to get instead of us not knowing. That does look like a spawn in though. I think that's a spawn in right there which is a little bit dangerous. My unit there is like, ooh, maybe we shouldn't be this far forward without any support. Let's go ahead and fall back across this and let this other unit over here support. Well, we'll see how that goes. If you look right up there in the upper left-hand corner for a little bit here, you will be able to see what happens. Upper right-hand corner, I'm sorry because the upper left-hand corner is just nothing up there. So we're just messing around with these skirmishers. Oh, look, there we go. There's a volley. And my unit has been completely broken. Lovely. So we need to get our general up there to go ahead and get that guy back in fighting shape. Hopefully here in a second. I'm getting distracted again. Here's the second unit that spawns in to the north and moving up the skirmishers of the unit that is running and there we go there's my general coming up to support 
So we have more units than we have frontage. And that is something that is going to be true throughout this battle. I have way more infantry units than I need here and could have other units be here without losing basically anything whenever it comes to coverage of the battlefield. And I think that is a testament to the fact that I should bring something else. I don't know exactly what it is that I should bring. I don't want to bring my snipers because my snipers have too much experience already. They don't need any more experience. Another thing that I could do is I could just dedicate like three units of infantry to just run in circles. As soon as the reinforcements spawn in, those guys could just run in circles because I think there's three infantry units I don't even need at all. And they're just a waste of space trying to get them in here on the front line. Of course, sometimes it is nice to have those backup units and I'm taking a ton of casualties here that I did not mean to take. Should have moved this a little bit differently. I don't know exactly what I could have done differently to take less casualties here. But I can tell you, it is definitely possible to take a lot less casualties than I am right now. That was not good. That was very bad. And see, now we're going to try to push this guy back fast enough and move that guy through there to try to get around behind him again. Because that... that Ploy through the center definitely did not work as you guys saw that unit spawned in right at the wrong time for me didn't have enough time to actually get past it before it spawned if I had maybe things would have gone differently overall I am pretty satisfied with the way this ran went run went I was looking over the casualties that most people took on this uh, k42 lost about 2,062, Civil War 64 lost about 2,196, and Panda Kraut in this battle lost about 2,609. So we are going to end up somewhere around those numbers. Not exactly, but close enough that it's not too bad. So that's all the foreshadowing I'm going to give you. I'm not going to tell you exactly what numbers we got. I can go back and I can look at one more person see what they got because I'm kind of interested so wow this one's really good something compass out there if you're listening I'm gonna give you some hype he only lost 925 men in this battle I'm super jealous I don't know how he did it to be honest like I'm sitting here going I feel like my second run, I played this almost perfect, and I still couldn't get that low for the way I play. I do admit that I don't play the way he does all the time. Obviously, he doesn't bring 14 units of infantry to a side battle. Nobody does. But it was to see what happens. I, I, wanted, I think from now on, I'm going to run everybody being infantry in every single side battle for the first run of the battle and see what happens. If it works out pretty well, I might even do it for the second, third, fourth run, however many runs I want to do, just to see what a pure infantry setup can do during these battles. Because it's really interesting to me to see exactly how many infantry I need to actually get full coverage. Because that's the key here, that there's one or two units right now that I could be not using. Like, right here, I think with probably two units could cover that. There's probably two units in the north that I don't need and one in the south that I don't need. And pretty soon here, it's going to become more and more evident that more and more units aren't necessary for this battle. Like, there's probably actually three units pretty quickly that become pretty well obsolete in the north without just completely overlapping. And you see that I'm having trouble controlling this many units right now. And I just keep pushing them back little by little, and it's not really working very well. And that's, that's because partly I have 
too many units, and partly I didn't get behind them. I think that getting behind them is almost more important than just about anything else in this battle. you got to get a unit or four behind them so that then you can actually take advantage of the numbers that you have. The only way that your numbers, n numbers of individual units actually help you is if you can actually turn their flank. And you can see here, I don't have their flank anywhere. I'm on their flank, but their flank is the edge of the map. I can't actually get around the edge because there is no edge to their lines. It's completely cut off. I cannot actually get around the edge. And you see here, all these units walking on top of each other make them slower. They burn more condition. I, I am losing a lot of condition to the fact that I have too many men here. But I wanted to see what would happen. I wanted to use all my units. I wanted to give, give it a chance to see, hey, if I really go for it, how many men could I actually use and actually get use out of? And I think it would have been better for me to actually hold back like one of my units and allow them to actually spread out and then like run one of them to do some some things and then tell that unit to stop and have another unit pass it by and maybe we could have done some cycling like that that could have helped allow me to run some units in some key places where I didn't end up running units because I thought that I couldn't afford to run units so look at this like they've got four units on this flank like there's no way I'm gonna be able to turn this flank ever no matter what I do they just keep holding this flank and they've got units on this flank too there's no way that I'm gonna be able to actually get them into a position where their units won't have their flank there's just no way and I have too many units here they're all overlapping with each other and they're not doing as much good as they could so basically I needed to rethink my strategy I needed to get a unit into their backfield units. I needed to get some amount of units into their backfield where they could actually be useful because our units are not being useful right now. Not the way they should be. And I feel like that's my fault. I should have been more careful with a lot of them. I could have, but you know, this is my first run. I'm just trying to get, get down what exactly I'm thinking about here trying not to you know I don't, I don't save scum in this I just play it once through to see what happens with way too many infantry that's that's the goal here is to just see what happens so here I'm looking I'm like ooh, maybe I can get their flank and then another guy retreats back and I'm like okay well that's not gonna work because he's gonna retreat back right through there and so we get into melee a little bit there which is fine. We're firing at our own backs, which look at those losses pile up. We really don't want that to happen, so we pull them back. Of course, part of that was maybe from the artillery that was firing at us there, but still. Unless you absolutely have to, if you're actually trying to get the best kill-to-death ratio that you can, the number of kills on your own men while they're in melee by just a couple of units firing, I know this is a broken record from me, will destroy your own KD. Period. Doesn't matter. Because the fact of the matter is, you are not losing very many men in this battle as a whole. So any number of men that you lose from friendly fire is a large percentage of your losses. If, let's say, you lose 2,000 men, but 100 of those are friendly fire, that's a lot of men compared to your total number of men lost. And it can be much higher very quickly. Like, I know that a single volley into an enemy unit normally kills about 100 men. So, if you volley one time 
you lose a, at least five men. But from what we've talked about, it seems like your units don't get to count cover. So that 25 cover that you always have, no matter where you're standing, your units don't get. So instead of taking 5% of the actual number of the losses they take, you take 5% of the damage they would take if they didn't have any cover. Well, 5% of that is much higher. So as far as I can tell, you usually lose at least 10 men per volley, if not more. I think it's more like 15 or 20 men per volley of your own men. And you think about the way that I'm setting up here. Five or six guys could easily shoot into one man, one unit, in a second. Five volleys of 15 to 20 losses each. And then you count, you know, if you're doing like I am with the skirmisher set up two, that's another 10 from each skirmisher unit. So you take five skirmishers, five regular units, and it suddenly goes from being a manageable amount of oh, I just lost 10 men, to an unmanageable amount where you lose, and this is really good, like, I really thought I had this, I really did, and then they just walk away. And I'm just like, really? You guys were, like, getting pulled off that fast, and then I pause it for a second just to tell everybody not to fire, and then suddenly everybody just runs away. And I'm like, ah, well, I guess that's how it happens. So now we're lining up to get kills here, and I'm going to try a little bit more of a cheese strategy that I learned. Well, I had kind of thought about it myself, but I hadn't really thought about exactly how it would work and whether or not it would work. And I decided, hey, you know, I've got all these infantry here. It's the perfect opportunity to try this exploit in this corner so the exploit is this whenever you have a unit that is firing on your enemy you gain firearms right everybody knows that how much firearms do you gain what makes you gain firearms is it every shot you take is it how much damage you do is it how much you how much ammo you use up and all those questions are questions that I don't have answers to and it seems to me, from what I can tell, that during this battle, I'm going to set up and tell them to quit firing like this over and over again. Getting individual shots with individual units repeatedly over and over again. And it works really well. As you can see here, everybody's getting shots over and over again. So we are taking a tremendous number of shots at the enemy regardless of how many men we're actually killing each time and how much ammo we're actually expending. We're not expending much ammo, and we're not expending much... And see, I'm, here I'm moving up the rest of my units so that we can actually fire on them with all the units because some of the units weren't in range. So now everybody's in range of everybody in the corner there. I went ahead and let them fire out this time because I was trying to get that one unit to move in, and I kind of missed my mark there. So now we're going to go back to doing this. And this is just to see I'm getting a ton of individual start of shots here. How much will that actually affect my firearm skill? We'll see in the next video how much all of this work is actually doing towards my firearms. And I should be having probably the three units that are back run off into the distance. I should be microing my the movement of some of these units a little bit better so that we actually keep them moving a little bit more because you know reasons so here we go we go ahead and move these guys off because they don't need to be standing in place pick back up where we left off firing volleys well partial volleys I accidentally moved the um, infantry unit instead of the supply wagon and don't realize it for a second here I'm really kind of focused in on getting these shots off and we're doing a pretty good job of making sure not to kill too many men too fast 
and getting a lot of individual shots off. And I want you guys to post in the comments below. Because in the next one, I will not do that. I will capture four times as many men. So I take those fewer shots. I will melee more. So I will get about the same amount of melee. But I will have meleeed more in the next video. I will kill fewer men because of the efficiency, of course. So what's the difference in efficiency? What's the difference in firearms? I spend less time in the battle, so I do get one less morale and one less stamina because you get morale and stamina based on how much time you spend in the map. So you guys comment down below or, you know, wherever, and give me a guess as to what you guys think I can gain. So here I try a different strategy of just like running the game. Oh no, that's the end. So I decide to go ahead and end it. Let's just charge in there, get it over with. So I didn't run it as run that as long as I could because I wanted to get at least a thousand men captured. So we capture the supply wagons. We don't end up capturing quite a thousand men. But with those two supply wagons, they really help out to get us closer to the thousand men mark. Because, you know, we need... Well, those 240 men really count towards our total whenever you take that into account. So the amount of time that this one's longer is about 30 minutes, I think. Because it was... I almost ended the other one about 30 minutes early. Okay, so I'm going to slow it back down. So you can see we lost 2,200, which is about 400 less than Panda Kraut, but a bit more than Civ War 64 and Kristoff. They lost 2,063 and 2,196, respectively. I did get a couple promotions. I captured some supplies, got about a few of that. And that's pretty much it there. We did normal amounts there. We got firearms of like 53. So I'm just kind of looking through to see what my firearms are on all these guys. We will go ahead and compare that in the next video to the other units. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.